Deuteronomy chapter um, 3 and verse 19. Exodus, uh, Exodus chapter 3 and verse 19, pardon me. All right. Look what it says. And I'm sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not by a mighty hand. They're in, they're in bondage now. Watch this. And I'll stretch forth my hand and I'll smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let you go. Next verse. And I will, stretch, and, and I will give this people favor. Say this like this. Favor. favor. Now this is supernatural favor. See, supernatural favor. One day of supernatural favor is worth a lifetime of labor. And it shall come to pass that when you go, you will not go empty. Notice. God never planned. Lord have mercy. Let me, I, I want to see how I want to say this. Redemption is not complete without divine provision. It's not complete. God does not want you to be saved and broke. God does not want you to be saved and sick. God does not want you to be saved and depressed. Say amen to this. God does not want you to be saved and full of fear. You've been redeemed from fear just like you've been redeemed from sickness. You have no right to fear and the devil has no legal right to put fear on you. Say amen to that. So say this, from this day, I will not fear. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. So I receive it by faith today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. So that was Psalm chapter 34 and four. He delivered me from all my fears. So I'm saying now I want to go in and I want to get my inheritance, but I'm going to have to follow the voice of God. God is going to speak to me about every matter, everything that he wants me to, everything I want to receive. God said, just follow my voice. Now somebody said, well, I, I heard I'm not under the law. You're not under the law. You're under grace. That's why you can follow this. All you got to do is do what he says. And I showed you yesterday or day before that his, his commandments are not grievous. They're not hard to do. So he's going to tell you to do something. Pour the oil down the street. Get up. There was another guy. He was in our ministry. And he, he, his, credit, his credit was so bad till it was so bad. And, and what happened? He started hearing these scriptures about ownership and what God had given him. So he went, he and his wife went down to buy a car. So they go down there. <laughs> he goes out and sits down. He sees a car in the showroom. Oh man, he likes this car. He and his wife. So he sat down with the salesman and said, okay, which one? And wrote up the paperwork. He said, okay, give me your social security number. And he looked at it. He said, sir, uh, I don't think we can do anything for you. He says, why? He says, sir, your credit, you, you're, you're, you're not. He said, sat back in his chair and said, Lord, what shall I do? God said, get up, march around the, on the car, you and your wife, seven times. Just march around. <laughs> so he got up, he and his wife marched around the car. Now, some of y'all won't do this. Yeah, All right, God. Come on now, because you got too much sense to do this. He marched around that car for seven times, went back and sat down, and God said, tell him to key it in there again. So he keyed it in again. He said, wait a minute, I must have something wrong. What was your social security number again? He gave it to him again. God had wiped out. Come on, this is the right crowd, I know. <laughs> I'm, talking about, I'm talking about supernatural deliverance. Yes, yes. 
Yes, See, if God help me, we have enough time, I'm talk about debt cancellation. Be because, because I'm not talking about natural. Come on, God. I'm talking about super. And God is a debt canceling God. I, I don't know what they have up there. Do they have the message translation? on that. Somebody give me a thumbs up if you have the message. You do. Is that a thumb up? Okay. All right. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 15 and verse 1, please. Deuteronomy chapter 15 and verse 1. And the message translation. At the end of every seven years, cancel all debt. Do, do, keep going. Keep going. Put it up. Next verse, please. This is a procedure. Everyone who has lent money to his neighbor writes it off. You must not press your neighbor or his brother pay, for payment. All debts are canceled. God said so. <laughs> all, I said all debts are canceled. Oh, oh Lord, Jesus. came to announce all debts are canceled. God said so. Now agree with God. Sit down. Now I'm going to tell you what somebody says. This, this is what the logical mind is going to say. Well, now, <laughs> Pastor, you, you got to understand that <clears throat> he said at the end of every seven years. Now, huh, we just can't cancel debt when we want to. We got to wait till seven years. All right? With your smart self, go to Mark chapter 7. <laughs> we got the devil where we want him now, boy. See, it's in the book. And this book is God speaking to you. Now look what it says here. Verse 26. Verse 25. 25. And there was a certain woman whose... Uh, there was a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit. You heard of him and came and fell at his feet. Watch this. In Jesus' feet. And the woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation. And she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. Next verse. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, I, it, something happened to part of that. So, I did. But Jesus said unto her, let the children first be filled. For it is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. Now, somebody being called a dog up in here somewhere. <laughs> Would you see this? And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord. Yet the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Next verse. And, glory to God. Mm. And he said unto her, For this saying... Go thy way, thy devil, the devil is going out of your daughter. Next verse. And when she was come to her house, she found the, daughter go, the devil going out, and her daughter lay upon the bed. Check it out. Notice who the woman was. She was a Greek, Syrophoenician by nation. Why is that so important? Because the Holy Spirit wants to let you know that it wasn't her time. Because the Bible says in Romans chapter 1 verse 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and then to the Greek. It wasn't her time. I said it wasn't her time. 
she pressed in by faith and faith moves time. So I don't care if he says seven years or 70 years, today is your time. Now take your faith and move it. I came to announce to you all debts are canceled. God said so. Man, you can't beat that. <laughs> you can't beat that. See, they tried to work that same thing at the graveside of Lazarus. You remember? Here comes here come Jesus and Martha or Mary met him and said, you know, if you'd only been here earlier, my, sir, my, my brother would not have died. He said, your brother shall rise again. He'll live again. She said, I know he will in the resurrection and the last day. He said, no, no, no. You don't know who I am. I am the resurrection. This is your day. I said, this is your day. I said, this is your day. You need healing? This is your day. You need deliverance? This is your day. Now sit down. believers in this house this is your Woo! Lord have mercy I'm trying to get through this something is happening in this house I said something is happening in this house. Can't you feel it? Can't you sense it? Something just broke. I said something just broke. got to sit down now. I got to finish this. Y'all taking up my time. just receive it. Don't try to take it and understand it like key Brother Key said yesterday. Just receive. You don't know how God's going to do it, but you do know what he's going to do. finish this. We got a ways to go here. Woo! Woo! Glory 
Thank God. Hey. All right, now um, let me. Uh, man. Woo! We jumped off there too quick. We jumped off there. Man, I couldn't hold it back. I, I tried to hold it back. I couldn't hold it. But what we're going to do is we're going to continue. I got to continue teaching you here. You're taking my time. All right. So for those who can sit down, sit down. That's my job. That's my job. I'm just doing my job. I came to announce some things. God said so. Woo. All right, sit down. Let me let me try to keep going with this. So you can have supernatural prosperity. You can have supernatural deliverance. You have supernatural favor. Say favor. favor. You can have supernatural business strategies. Supernatural. I'm not talking about natural. You can't, you can't think this high. This is where we're going, folks. There's about to be a clear distinction between the believer and the rest of the world. You are about to go beyond what is ordinary. Starting in this meeting. When they Google your name, they will find you at the top. <laughs> So 
So we're moving past anything that the natural mind can produce. Believe me. All right, yeah, no, the windows of heaven are open. You are being showered with blessing. Right now, as I speak, you're going to get ideas, concepts, insights, money in the bank. It's not going to be by might nor by power, but it's going to be by that blessing. All right, so let's, let's just, while they're doing that, let's just keep going with a little bit of this. All right? So let's go to Genesis, Genesis chapter 12. And we got to remember, we kind of left off there the last time. And in verse 1, Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 through 4. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred, from thy father's house, into a land that I will show you. Now notice he didn't give him a map. Didn't give him a brochure. He said, just go. Follow me. Verse 2. And he said, and I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless you. And I'll make your name great. And you will be a blessing. I will bless them that bless you and curse them that curse you. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed now I'd like to read that verse 2 first out of the amplified translation boy they got kids walking up here and everything boy they, everybody blessed. everybody blessed he said and I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you with abundant increase of favors. Say favor. favor. And make your name famous and distinguished. Say I'm famous and, I'm famous and distinguished. And you will be a blessing dispensing goods to others. Now what does that mean? That means if you just try to get it, no, you're going that way. You're going, you're going that way. You're going, homeboy, that way. It, that means if you just try to get it and don't, and you forget to bless others, the stream could stop. Because your covenant responsibility is to be a blessing. He doesn't want it to stop with you. We got to get all families of the earth blessed. Amen. Say amen to this. Amen. Now look what he says here in verse 3. Now, Lord have mercy. This is just a reminder that all debts are canceled. I stand so All right, let, let's keep going here. Now I want you to see this. The he said all families blessed. I want you to hear this now, because I want to dip down into something for just a second here. In Acts chapter ten and verse thirty-four. God speaks a word, and he's talking about 
being a respecter. This is in the King James uh, translation, if you have that, please. I guess they're having problems with that. Uh, let me go in my Bible. Okay. Then Peter opened his mouth and he said of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Next verse. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Let me give you the Winston translation. <laughs> Has the same access to his blessing. The same access to his blessing. Now what am I saying here? That all families would be blessed. No matter what your culture, your country, or your color. All can be billionaires. Oh, I know, I know I took you too far too quick. God's people are to be envied, not pitied. Now let's go to Genesis chapter 26. You see, there is something here that we've got to get right in our thinking about the blessing of Abraham or the blessing of the Lord. And look what he says here. He said in Genesis, um, Genesis chapter 26, starting at verse 2. Let's have, just start there. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down to Egypt. Dwell in the land that I, which, which I will tell you of. He said, Sojourn in this land and I'll be with you and I'll bless you. For unto thee and to thy seed will I give all these countries and I'll perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. Next verse. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. And I will give unto thy seed all these countries. Uh, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Yes, sir. Come on down to verse 12, please. And Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. And who blessed him? See, a lot of times people don't have problems with wealth as long as they did it. A person can even win the lottery. And do you know what they do? I don't know what they do here in this state, but in Chicago, they put you on TV. They get a big mock you know, check and have it with, you know, $50 million or something and everybody's out there smiling. <laughs> you know? And everybody just watching and said, boy, I wish I'd have hit that number. Don't have any problems with the wealth. But get up there and say God did this. <laughs> and watch the persecution start. Because hundredfold comes with persecution. That enemy does not want people to know that God will make you rich. He does not want people to know that God will heal you. God will make your marriage whole. Come on, he does not want people to know that. So what has happened is people have to realize that, wait a second. He had God to bless him. And look at verse 13. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. For he had possessions of flocks, possessions of herds, great store of servants. And the Philistine what? Envied him. You are to be envied and not pitied. People ought to see you and say, my God. 
And that doesn't make any difference what that category is, but they should see you and want to know, what do you have? And that's why I said Christianity was never meant to be dictated. It was meant to be demonstrated. People should see it on your life that the God that you serve will take care of you in style. Isn't that a wonderful thing? So, as I looked at that, look at verse 16. And Abimelech said unto Isaac, go from us, for you are much mightier than we are. See if they have that in the Living Bible translation and just put it up there if you have that translation. I'm not sure whether you have it or not. Praise God. He said, finally, Abimelech ordered Isaac to leave the country. Go somewhere else. He said, for you have become too powerful for us. How would you like your neighbors to circulate a petition and say, listen, you've got to move out of this neighborhood. Well, that's where you're going. So when I look at this, I want to say, that this is for all people. And what we have to do is we have to trust God when it comes to a blessing manifested in our lives. Now let me show you where I'm going with this. Here is a man named Joseph. Now Joseph's brothers envied him. Matter of fact, they wanted to kill him. And they sold him. And some traveling band of Ishmaelites bought him as a slave and took him on down to eat him. Sold him again. Now understand what he had on his life. He had the blessing. Now this blessing is so powerful till it guarantees, Lord have mercy, a life of prosperity. And it also makes provision for generational prosperity. Over in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 14, would you look at that please? In Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 14. Glory to God. He says, I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. He is not blessing you so that it just ends with your generation. Are you all with me? Now you remember Jacob, and, uh, pardon me, Joseph. And you remember, you remember Job, I'll get it right, it's all them J's. You remember Job. And look what it says in Job, now just flip to these scriptures very quickly, or if you don't need to flip to them, just take my word for it, praise God. Job chapter one. And in Job chapter one, he gave you a financial statement of Job. And look what he says here in verse 4. And the sons went, uh, pardon me, uh, verse 3. And his substance was also 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she asses, and a very great household. So that this man was the greatest of all the men in the east. Say amen to that. All right, so now Job starts getting in trouble because he starts getting into unbelief. And he begins to start praying the same prayer over and over again for these kids. Obviously, they were probably living in a way that wasn't pleasing unto God. But now the Bible says that I sought for a man among them who could make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I would not destroy it, but I didn't find any. That was in Ezekiel, I think, chapter 22 and verse 30. My point to you is 
is that you can stand in the gap for kids who are not acting quite right. Say amen to that. And you can keep the hedge up around them. Now look what he says in verse 9. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Do you, Does Job fear God for naught? Have not you made a hedge about him, not about his house, and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. So notice what that blessing did. That blessing covered Job, it covered his house, it covered his businesses, it covered all that he had. But what happened? Now here comes Satan, and Satan is now finding an opening to get into Job's life because the wall of the blessing had gone down, and so now Satan attacks him. He attacks his businesses, he attacks his, his family, he attacks his health, he, I mean everything. Now, as you look forward in this, here is Job now, and he's in kind of a bad situation. And look what it says here. He said in verse 21, and said, Naked I came from out of my mother's womb, and naked I shall return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, this is a very interesting thing that Job said. He said, the Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Now, the Bible talks about for us that we should uh, understand that in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Now, if I look at that same 16 and 17 of 2 Timothy chapter 3, and I look at it, let's look at it in another translation. Let's look at it in the living translation. Let's just try that and see what it says. If you have the living translation, would you please put it up there? Now, in the living translation, it gives you just a little uh, bit more clarity of that verse. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. Now this is why the scripture is coming to you because we all come in the kingdom with ungodly thought patterns. So the scripture is gonna teach us what's right. Verse 17, God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. So isn't it just like the enemy to try to deceive you or deceive me and make us think something that is not true and really what is true make us uh, somehow shun that and stay away from it. Job said, the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Well, if you look at the scriptures and look at the background, God didn't take it away. He's not giving to something to you to take it away. He's giving something to you to increase you. So what had happened, Job, what he said was truly stated because the Holy Spirit inspired the writer to write it. But it was not a statement of truth because it didn't line up with the will and the plan of God for your life. Say amen to that. But he wanted you to see it so that you won't be a victim of the same thing. You see, the Bible says, submit yourself to God. This is found in James chapter 4 and verse 7. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. What is that saying? That's saying whatever you don't resist is allowed to remain. And the reason why is because you have the authority in the earth. God can't come down and do something on your behalf without your, you giving him authority to do it. Say amen to that. All right. So what happened? Job lost that. And look what it said next. Look at Job chapter 2, if you will, and verse uh, 7. So when Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sores, sore boils from the sole of his foot to his crown. Verse 9. Then said his wife unto him, Do you still retain your integrity? Why don't you do what? curse God and die. <clears throat> now, integrity is an interesting thing. This integrity 
get you through the things that are you have come up against to get you to your portion. In other words, don't accept your condition for your portion because God has a portion for you. The condition for you is something usually, the, pardon me, the condition that you have. Can I just talk here? Praise God. The condition that you have is something that usually the evil one has set up. That's your present condition, but that's not your portion. Your portion is found in scripture that we need to open this book and see what God really gave us. So notice Job had sores on his body from the, his crown or from the foot to the crown. Now, if I look at Job and look at Job chapter 33, I think it is, I'm going to look at that. Now, follow me now. I'm almost done, but just follow me. He says in 33 and verse 25, his flesh is fresher than a child's. He shall return to the days of his youth. Now, now what is happening here? He is saying his flesh is fresher than a child's. He shall return to the days of his youth. Come on over to Job now, chapter 42. This is the last chapter of Job. And look what he did. In Job 42, verse 10. And the Lord returned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave the Job, Job how much? Twice as much as he had before. Verse 12. And so the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep, this is a new financial statement, and 6,000 camels, come on, and a thousand yoke of oxen, and a thousand she asses, and he had seven sons and three daughters. Verse 15, and in all the land were no women found so fair as the daughters of Job. My Lord, they were looking good. And... Verse 16, after this lived Job, how many years? A hundred and, come on, 40 years, saw his sons and his son's sons and even four generations. And Job died being what? Old and full of years. Now I want you to see that because it no more mentions the boils and sores and pus that was all over his body. Why? Because his flesh was fresher than a child's. He had returned to the days of his youth. I'm only saying to you that you may get in trouble. Something may happen to a part of your body, but God has a supply. That supply is laid up for you in the invisible realm. And by faith, you can get that part replaced in this meeting. Doesn't make any difference what it is. I just want to show you this. This is happening with Job. All right, let me finish up here. So next, <laughs> next, now I'm, I'm running all this by you, but you got to meditate some of this yourself. All right. Next, I want to just say that now Joseph was raised up. I'm going to talk to some now. And he's raised up. Now understand, he's working as a slave in the house of Potiphar. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 39 that because of the blessing on Joseph, Potiphar's house was blessed. Now notice also that God gave Joseph, an ability that Joseph didn't have before to manage the ranches of Potiphar. Notice, now everything's growing to the point 
that Joseph, now Potiphar, is not even looking at what's under his hand. He's trusting Joseph with everything. Now, why does Joseph have to stay full of integrity? Because the blessing won't function with a person that lacks integrity. Say amen to this. I'm saying that integrity was a key for Job to get out of what he had, and it was a key for you to make it to the end of the assignment that God has for you, Lord Jesus. Last part. So now, here is Joseph. This is Potiphar makes eyes at him. Joseph then turns her down. She keeps his coat. Tells a lie on him. Now they send Joseph to jail. But notice, he wasn't down there in jail uh, talking about Miss Potiphar. You know that heifer got me down here and I'm trying to get so forth. He, he didn't do that. He didn't do that. Because you can't do that. You got to pray for those who despitefully, see, see, here's the deal. Maintain integrity and they can't stop you. Just maintain, just, just do what's right. And the blessing knows what to do. It's going to take you to the top. Now watch this, threw him in jail. What happened? He took over the jail. Am I right about it? Next thing you know, Potiphar, uh, King, uh, Pharaoh has a dream. Pharaoh calls him. He goes tells Pharaoh what the dream is, Pharaoh hires him. So you see, you the man. Put him second in charge. Now he's handling everything. Let me just say this. Joseph was a Jew. They didn't have no equal opportunity program back there. He was a Jew. But because of the blessing. He was going to become the head no matter what culture he was in. Watch this. No matter what color you are. I'm, I'm dipping into something now. I told you I'm going to dip into this. Thing. I'm going to play with it before we get out of here. See, because what we say, I that supervisor doesn't like me, he's prejudiced. So what? I'm not talking about people who don't have the blessing. I'm talking about people who do. If God can't promote you with that supervisor, he will remove him because there is no weapon. I better come over here. You see, we've tried to trust in a government that don't have no power and is corrupt anyway. And we've tried to trust in that to try to do something. Folks, let me tell you, you've got a different government. You've got the government of the kingdom of God. And let me tell you, if you have a situation, you run to God. And as you go to God, God, that blessing will be released on your behalf and it will work things out. Now, let me tell you, it'll look like you're in trouble right now, but hold on to the blessing because the more confidence you have in it, the more power is released on your behalf and it'll turn your situation right on round for you to succeed. Now, I'm going to tell you something. When I found that out, you can rest. Because nobody can stop BW. From the White House to the outhouse. Nobody. And nobody can stop you because if God be for you. Come on, help me now. Come on, help me. No, this is the answer. See, you and I need to adopt 
the blessing. We need to embrace the blessing. (laughs) Let me tell you, what God has for you is not only is he's going to make sure you get promoted, but if you keep hanging in there, you're going to own it. Boy, y'all got to y'all got to see what I'm saying here. Look what he says. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 10. Now on that Matthew, he talked about the blessing. He said, Blessed are those that mourn, or blessed are those that so and so. Look at this one now. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of of heaven. Next verse, please. And then he says this, blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you. Come on and say all manner of evil against you falsely. Watch what it says for my name's sake. Look what it says. Rejoice. (laughs) See, you may as well rejoice because they can't hold you. They can't stop you. But the enemy wants you to start talking about people, running them down, so forth and so on. Now, I know there's a justice system of God, and I'm coming out with that book next, Vengeance and Recompense. But I'm telling you now, there is a way that you release the blessing. And one of the ways you release it is when the devil thinks he got you down and gets you crying and belly aching and so forth. Fool him. Rejoice. And when you do, the blessing is released and it's going to do the work for you. Last place. Sit down. Last place. First Kings chapter King, First Kings chapter King. First Kings chapter 17, please. Woo! This is your meeting right here. This is your meeting. This this is the one God called you to. This is the, this is the one that's going to turn around situations in your life that you've been dealing with for years, but this is the one. Say, this is the one. Now, I don't care who you are or where you are, I'm telling you, God can take you from on welfare to faring well. God can take you. All right, look, last place. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, oh, Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 8. Just put it up on the screen very quickly, please. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 8. Here's what it says. And I want you to get this. The Lord shall command the blessing upon you and your storehouses and all that you set your hands to. That's enough. Let's go now to 1 Kings and look at 1 Kings and chapter eight, uh, 17, please. 1 Kings 17 and verse 2. Now this is when God told the prophet to announce that the rain is going to stop and there'll be no more rain until I say so. And so what happens here in verse 2? And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, glory to God, get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself in the brook Cherith that is belonging to Jordan, before Jordan. And it shall be uh, that thou shalt drink of the brook and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. Say command. command. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is beside Jordan. Check it out. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. And notice what happened. Go down here by this river down here. And I got some birds that's going to feed you. Can I get an amen out of this crowd? Now they're going to feed you twice a day. They're going to bring you some, 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 some barbecue. Amen. Amen. Some Texas barbecue. Praise God. Well, I got that on my mind. Now you put that, you, that's a power suggestion, man. And, uh, and look, they're going to bring you Big Mac and cheese in the evening and and some, some turkey bacon and some things. <laughs> no, no, my point to you is God can command 
blessings on you. He can command a bird to bring you provision. Is this exciting or is this exciting? Twice a day. Guaranteed this was not some throwaway food. This was probably off the king's table. God gives you the biggest and the best. So what happened next? He did that. But give me the next verse, please. Because soon the brook dried up. And it came to pass while the brook, dri the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Praise God. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying, Glory to God, Arise now and get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman to take care of you. Well, I'm going to close out. <laughs> On that note, because what I want to let you know is God can command animals, can command people. Your problem is not money. Your problem is faith in God. That blessing that is on you guarantees you success. Now watch this. I, living testimony. The lady said that her rent was due and they were going to put her out that next day if she didn't have $2,000. She said she reminded God of her covenant. And a knock came at the door. She said it was late, about 1130, almost 12 o'clock at night. And a knock came at the door. She said, who is it? He said, it's your neighbor from upstairs. She said she cracked the door. She said, yeah, what is it? He went in his vest pocket. He said, I have here an envelope with $2,000 in it. Tell your God to leave me alone. 